got that axle, that axle, and then those trailer axles all on different scales. I got another video for you guys today. It's gonna have more data than it did before. Um, pretty excited to show you guys. I'm not gonna just use the tape measure this time. Um, it's pretty cool. You'll probably be able to tell from the thumbnail. Obviously, I haven't gotten that far to editing this video yet to show you guys what I'm um, also looking at doing. But hey, let's check it out. So, you guys are familiar with the uh, the Chevy, the 1500 Duramax, and I uh, have a buddy here that let me borrow his trailer, and um, you know I wanted something of like this size to really show you guys, um, you know, kind of like. A realistic trailer someone would buy and um and hook up to their 1500 not just like some 19 foot toy hauler so i mean just take a minute to kind of look at that uh it obviously needs quite a bit of help and um you're gonna see this thing unhooked from the trailer and get measurements of that as well so i'm measuring this we're looking like right at one line above four inches Let's go take a look at the front. This is obviously going to affect the front as well. Lifting the front up a little higher. It's about the center there. We're at about nine and a half. Maybe one line above that. So let's say nine and a half and four. We're going to write those numbers down. And we're going to try and keep the truck as level as possible. We're also going to try and keep everything right here the same as well with maybe the exception of having to move the holes down on the hitch depending on how much height we get out of the truck um, we're going to leave the weight distribution the same so that way it's not helping the roadmaster system any more than it already is all right so the truck's disconnected from the trailer now and uh, got everything off just laying there so we're going to take a look at what the back and what the front looks like so let's measure the front first. Looking at just below nine inches. I'd say about two lines below nine inches. And then right here, we're looking at about two lines above seven inches. So that's our baseline of what we're working with right now. And the truck does sit higher in the front. And on this truck, I did that on purpose because I knew I was gonna be putting Roadmaster suspension on it before I even bought the truck, uh, before I did any of the suspension modifications or anything. So anyways, that's our baseline. We're gonna see how much lift we get out of the rear with the Roadmaster suspension empty. And then we're gonna see what it does with the trailer on it. So we got the Roadmaster Springs here. A um, little undecided whether to take the wheel and tire off like I did on the bigger Duramax. I think I'm just gonna take it off for you guys because it's just six lug nuts. Pop that guy off. You'll get a little better picture of how the springs work and how they um, they bolt up on here. So at least for this side and at least for the, for the video, I'm taking it off. That's the way you're supposed to do it. Also, since this is not really per se an install video, but uh, it is gonna have a lot of install um stuff going on right now guys these 10 ton sunix jacks are way overkill uh you have a lower point over here at the front of the leaf pack that you can put um your standard uh floor jacks they should fit under there depending on how lifted your truck is what modifications are done whatever um and again that's usually right there at the front of the leaf pack i believe don't quote me on it that is where the instructions tell you to put it um the instructions are in there and I have my own way of doing things that works for me. All right, guys and gals, let's check this out. Um, let's see what's in the box. That doesn't look too overwhelming, does it? Notice there's no hardware other than instructions, feeler gauges, 
um, some other goodies. But there's no other hardware bag, nothing. I think that's just the best part about these. The ease of install is obviously like the best part. But that's the box. You're not thumbing through instructions right away. This makes it to where you you don't have to go to a shop to get it done. Like this is genuinely something, and purposely in this video, done in the driveway. So just something to keep in mind. I wanted to show you guys that right away. I think they've kind of changed a couple of little key touches here, if I'm not mistaken. Phenomenal product. So um, we're gonna go ahead and break everything out, which it already is. I'm gonna get some of the tools that you're gonna need, which is for that Allen key, that bolt, um, this adjuster right here. And um, obviously for the, uh, the jam nut adjusters right here. So it's literally just those four um, bolts that you're, you're touching, I guess, or say five. These two right here that are gonna be where your setting is at to hold the spring in tension. Um, you're gonna adjust the spring on the truck with this nut here. And then that's to secure it on uh, up against the U-bolt, which I'll show you. And then this hooks right here on the end of the leaf spring. As long as you have an OEM leaf spring, and I'll show you actually some differences that I have to my truck right now to, you know, that doesn't cause any issues with any of this right here. So anyways, let's get to it. We actually sat the other one on top of here just to kind of get it lined up. So I just sat the claw part on the end of the leaf spring, which is hard to tell uh, what that looks like, but it's back there. And this is all just sitting freely. And we have just enough here, or you can adjust the spring with this with this rod. Um, we have just enough length here, where we're gonna put the bolt. We're gonna put all this stuff through it. Hopefully you guys can see that pretty well. And we're gonna put it through it right here, and then we're gonna start tightening it. And then that's where, when we start tightening it, we're gonna get the feeler gauge and go 25 or 40%, which today we're gonna do 40%. And we're gonna crank this guy up and then we're gonna set the lock nuts to set it in place. And that's literally it. And I just wanna make that point to you guys. Um, hopefully I made that sound simple because it really is. It's just making a couple of adjustments, throwing the tire back on, go to the other side, do it. And then, um, we're gonna hook it back up to the trailer. There's plenty of like how-to videos and all that stuff. Uh, I don't wanna get like too much into that and waste too much time. This is more about measurable data. Uh, I just wanna give you guys like an idea. How much is it gonna lift the truck? Like that way you could go to your house and you can go get a floor jack and put it under the back of your truck and take these same measurements, right? And what I gained, and you could try and gain it yourself and then stand back at your truck and then look at it and say, hey, can I live with that empty? great because if i can it's going to be an awesome ride when i'm towing and then you don't have to do airbags none of that stuff which would be a little bit more of a cumbersome process especially if you're doing wireless air systems and then um dealing with airbag leakage whatever this is just to set it and forget it if it were to ever fail at least you could get home uh, i guess you could with an airbag too uh, and airbags have their place in this industry they're not going away by any means um, but in this application where we have great shocks um, and then we have an additional spring that helps the ride of the truck empty where we're going to be good to go and that this right here normally these trucks come with two springs uh, and an overload you're going to notice that i have an additional three and no overload spring and that's because i did the deaver mini pack and um or they call it an add pack whatever um deaver makes them Cognito actually stocks them. We stock some of them as well as a Cognito dealer. Um, but the reason that we did this, it's a more progressive feel and it engages slowly uh, versus just these two springs slamming into the overload spring and bottoming out. Uh, when the truck was empty, I, the very first day we bought it and went to a friend's house, um, hitting some of the brakes in the freeway, it was bottoming out. And I'm sure you guys have all noticed that. Uh, just boom, you could feel it slam into the overload. And that's just with four people in the truck, completely empty, no cargo at all, the first day we bought this truck. So this is something that I felt was very essential and very much needed to do. And it didn't lift the truck a ton. Uh, it does have additional spacers you can put underneath, but I opted to not do that because again, I knew that the Roadmaster Springs were gonna go on this truck. And if I was gonna crank it all the way up, 
to the 40% capacity, I knew that it's going to give me the lift that I want it uh, to have when it's empty. And then hopefully, if this video goes to plan, uh, it's going to give me a little bit of extra help when towing. All right, I'm gonna pick up this feeler gauge. There's actually two that it comes with, a thinner one, a thicker one. Um, just wanna show you guys that the spring opens up, all right? So I can actually fit this inside there. And you'll notice like right here, like nothing's fitting in there, not even the smaller one, because the spring's completely collapsed. Um, so now that it's expanded, we're set, we have this, uh, which is securing it. That's all tightened up right there. And it's got a nylon nut. It's, um, it's got this brass washer fitting, not fitting. God, I'm making up words. Um, it's got this guy in here. So, I mean, it's, it's as secure as it can get. It's as tight as it can get. Um, we're all torqued up. We got this guy is just the adjuster right here. So that actually doesn't physically change. And then we got our jam nuts, which are supposed to be a 15 16. I put a one inch guy on here. Um, an open end wrench and I tighten these up and um, yeah we're all good to go so this is it and I'm gonna put the tire on we're gonna do it to the other side I'm not gonna bore you with doing the other side um, but yeah this guy's all solid ready to go and we're gonna see how tall the truck sits with these springs now and see what it does with the trailer a little bit of a race against the, the Sun since the Sun goes down so early this time of year So here it is with the springs on. Again, they're set to the 40% setting right here in the back. Already did the other side. Didn't even have to take the tire off. Uh, I think all in all, it might have taken me five minutes with all the tools already laid out. Um, maybe even less than that. I just busted it out real quick. So um, anyways, this is what it looks like. We're gonna get it back in front of the trailer to get the measurements because that's where we took the measurements from before. My uh, driveway is a, Slightly at an incline decline. Let's just say decline Making the truck lean a little more forward So to get you guys the most accurate measurements, I'm gonna go park that over there and get the same measurements we did before Let's see what we got right here So the best I can come up with Centered is uh, eight and a quarter inches I gotta take you guys with me you gotta go to this front wheel so eight and a quarter. It looks like the front. We're at two lines before nine. All right. It gained about one and three quarters of an inch in the back, empty. That's what you can expect, which is pretty substantial, pretty big. Um, so now the truck sits pretty close to level. Anyways, before we lose like all of our sunlight, let's go ahead and hook it up to the trailer, leave the weight distribution the way it was. Let's get everything hooked up the way it was and get those final measurements for you guys. And then um, also we're gonna go and uh, hopefully very soon, hopefully today, if I wanna do it in the dark, uh, we're gonna go hit the scales. So check this out. I'm gonna show you guys a little bit, little bit of something. What I wanted to show you was these numbers here. We got the steer, which is the front axle of the truck, the rear axle of the truck, and then the combined trailer axles. And they were all on three different scales. Uh, that gives us our gross combined weight. Um, some of these actually might exceed the way the truck is sitting now because it's not the 2022 three liter Duramax, which has like a heavier, I think like rear springs, rear axle, maybe even a different axle ratio. They actually, I think they increased it Again, I could be wrong. It's somewhere like 4,000 pounds, I think it increased it. So I think this went from like nine to like 13,000 or something like that. So um, I think we're over and that's okay um, for this video. So I just kind of wanted to show you guys that and I'll get some of these numbers on the side of the trailer and put all this down in the comments below. That way you guys can line item all of this. But the final thing I wanted to get at is that I went over and took the time to go get this thing weighed because I want to see 
some guys will run it the way it was before and have it just sitting there like sky high in the front you see it on the road all the time any of us that go to the desert and obviously you can look up like anywhere that i mean trucks don't come that way for a lot of reasons but your visibility over the front of the, the hood is obviously down if you if you're up in the air like that and having less weight on the front axle doesn't let you steer as well it doesn't let you brake as well you have less control over the truck and trailer and that's why they have that forward rake to bring the truck back down to level in the back once you put weight on the back of the truck whether that's something in the bed something on the tongue combination of the both um very important to have this as level as you can and the trailer as level as you can and obviously have the correct equipment to do so right you want to not be over and exceed the truck's limits you also don't want to have like too much cargo in the back of the trailer creating some sway back there you don't have too much weight in the front of the trailer i mean that is not as crucial of an issue but um i just want to show you guys that you guys can get more into those details uh that information is like very commonly known by many people by many of you guys watching this um and that's a whole nother subject to get into a whole nother rabbit hole so i just want to show you guys the numbers of this right here and um we're gonna get it hooked up right now all right, so we got the truck and the trailer all set up on the truck. So right now we're looking at nine and a half inches in the front, just exactly how um, the height of the truck was when we had this on from the very first time. But in the back, that's where it really gained uh, quite a bit. So I'm gonna grab the measuring tape, show you guys, but we're five, about five and three quarters, just one line below that. And before we were right at four inches. So we gained about a one and three quarters of an inch in height back here, just from those Roadmaster Springs. Uh, one thing I did want to show you guys is that, and then I want to go back to it afterwards and adjust these weight distribution bars because this thing is being towed normally by a 2500 and doesn't need the help of these. Uh, but we're going to crank these guys up a little bit more because there's plenty more adjustment in those. And um, it's something you guys would be doing anyways. So apples for apples, we're gaining about one and three quarters of an inch. And then we're gonna see how much we're gonna gain here. And overall, what you guys would be doing at home anyways, is adjusting all of this. Something that I should have done, should have, I should have done very first thing was adjust these, um, but we dove right into this. So I do like this already. Yes, it's sitting high in the front as I expected. Um, I did not expect this to be dead level. It's not even this way on uh, my blue truck, but it does help a ton compared to, uh, to stock. And then I don't have to throw airbags in there at all. And we get some of that suspension back. We're not sitting on the overload springs, all of those good things. So gonna get this adjusted and then uh, come back to you guys. We're right at six inches. About nine inches and about two lines past it. We lowered the front and then lifted the rear. So look how much more balanced the truck and trailer look now. And keep in mind, this trailer is pretty level and we'll go take a look in the inside of it, but there's not a lot of weight in the back. And if there's water in the front and there's not a lot of weight behind the rear axles and this trailer is already too big for this truck, that is really, really impressive right there. Um, I don't know how much worse the scenario is gonna get for you on a on a 1500 um if we got if we have which we're gonna find out water a toy hauler um which is made to have again weight in the rear and there's a very minimal weight back there i think there's like two really small quads and um you know overall you guys you guys will know this is really impressive with a 1500 gross combined weight rating is 15,000 pounds and we're at 15,940. So we're gonna see uh, where we're at with that. So we got our certificate from earlier. Get my keys. We got that axle, that axle, and then those trailer axles all on different scales. So we're gonna go get that weight certificate and uh, I don't wanna waste any time here even though I don't have any people behind me. Let's get this done. 
We're uh, about to pull off the scales. Is it mirrored? I feel like the truck's shuddering. <laughs> it's out of like almost out of fuel right now. Anyways, I didn't even um, I didn't even put diesel in it. Hopefully, I don't run out of fuel like on the scales here. But I just want to share that with you guys that it's it's similar as I could get it for everything. I didn't want to put a bunch of diesel fuel in it and then not be able to compare those numbers. Hey guys, just want to go over some of these numbers with you. You'll look at the gross weight, uh, the 15,000 pound number. They're very similar. The only difference being when I went to go get reweighed, I did have a couple of tools in the back. Yeah, I don't think it was 40 pounds worth, but hey, it measures in 20 pound increments. So uh, you'll just notice that the purpose of weighing this is that the steer axle, you're gaining weight. The drive axle, you're losing a little bit of weight. And the trailer axle, you'll notice, is very similar. Um, these numbers, they do make a big difference uh, driving. And that's why I wanted to take the measurements to kind of give you some of that measurable data. Is that when you do what you're doing with the Roadmaster suspension on the back of the truck, you are giving your steer axle a little bit more weight, which is going to give you better steering, better overall handling, better braking, um, just so many different things. You want to have your truck as level as possible, your trailer as level as possible, so you have more control over everything, and that keeps you, and if you have your family inside, your family safe, it's just something to keep in mind, uh, something to take serious. So just want to show you guys that there is a difference when you change these things to your truck. That's kind of the takeaway from this. All right, guys. All right, guys. So I have the Roadmaster suspension. Um, this is for the 2500, but it's just an example. It is on the Scoville Motorsports website, scovillemotorsports.com. Obviously, if you did find any benefit in watching this video, it would be awesome if you guys um, wanted to support us as well in buying the product from us. Um, so I'll go ahead and take a look at that. You can also email me if you have any questions, scovillemotorsports at gmail.com. Obviously, you guys know we have an Instagram page at Scoville Motorsports and, um, you know, some of my personal builds and personal kind of fun is on the uh, American Duramax Instagram page, which has a much larger following. So you can reach out to us anywhere, anytime if you got any questions. But I did want to show you guys that you can buy these products directly from our website. There's all kinds of different options. I mean, you can finance from a firm. You can pay by PayPal. Apple Pay, credit cards. I mean, I think there's like close to 10 to 15 options to pay now. And um, we just, you know, wanted to give you guys the best experience that we can and a very professional website that, again, keeps expanding, growing, and we keep adding products to it every single week. So, anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, if there's anything I could do for you guys, feel free to reach out. Drop a comment below if I missed something that uh, you guys want to see on the next one. I'm going to continue to keep doing these, not with just Roadmaster only, but just with all kinds of products. Um, but this is one excellent product that you guys should definitely check out and consider, especially when considering airbags. All right, guys, take it easy.